Right, good afternoon everyone. Uh, my name is Yassi. I am the founder and coordinator of Rise Up, which is a mentoring and skills sharing network, um, which is obviously supervised by BPA. Um, first of all, I apologize about some of the slides. I had to move my PowerPoint presentation from a Mac to another computer, which is not Mac. So there's a slight problem with uh, some of the slides in terms of reading it, but hopefully it should be OK. So this is the second seminar on Rise Up since <coughs> it was launched last January. Um, and that's why I'm going to give you a brief update about where we are at at the moment and where we are heading to. And then in the second part, I'm going to briefly run through the mentoring guidelines and training pack, which is normally sent to every mentor who's matched with another mentee. Um, the second part is mainly useful for mentors, but um, I've emphasized that mentoring is a two-way relationship, it's a two-way process. So it would help um, mentees a lot to know what the process is so that they can also actively engage in the process in order to benefit from it. Um, so if you are m planning to become a mentee or you are a mentee, please do stay on because it, it will uh, be useful for you as well. Right, so uh, update. This is the first slide that I have a problem with. I apologize. Um, We've had over um, 94 people signing up since last January. And uh, initially when we started, we had about 61% mentors and um, the rest were mentees. But this year, uh, this time, uh, we've got a healthy balance of 51% mentors and um, you can't see it there, but it's 49% mentees. So I am pleased to see that because that means supply and demand go together. However, as you see from the next chart, we've got problems at some of the drop zones where we have more mentees than we have mentors. And one of the criteria we look at when we match mentor and mentees together is um, where, where their regular drop zone is. And unfortunately, um, where m most of these mentees are normally jumping, we don't have as much mentors, which means I would have to match them with somebody who either occasionally jumps at their drop zone or just somewhere else, which is the second option. Um, and it's not really ideal. However, um, as I will come on to in the second part, the mentors and mentees do not necessarily have to meet face to face. And actually, sometimes it helps to have your uh, mentoring sessions conducted on Skype because you're away from the drop zone and any distractions. You, you know, ideally sitting down focusing on uh, focusing your time on, on uh, discussions with your mentor or mentee and it might actually be useful for people uh, to learn from others who have a particular set of skills but are not necessarily regulars at their uh, normal drop zone. So we're looking into that and I'll come on to um, in a bit to say how, how we're going to plan and change that. Um, this is when you fill in the form, age is optional, and this is what we've got so far. I'm pleased to see that we've got mentees um, signing up from all ages, so it's not just the young or the old. Um, there's a nice, healthy balance there, I would say. And that's reflected uh, along with the mentors who sign up, so that's really good, really positive to see. Yes, the last one is Dillis. <laughs> Um, the total number of jumps is quite interesting as well. Uh, this option was added only recently, so that's why we only have 10 responses. Uh, as you can see, it's normally people who have low number of jumps that <coughs> sign up to become um, mentees. But also, if you can see from the end of the graph, uh, there are quite a few who have experience, and, and those people at the end of the graph are the ones that are thinking perhaps into going into a particular discipline or becoming um, coaches or camera people in the future and planning ahead. Mentors, <coughs> uh, great number of jumps from 130 to 5,000 and that obviously shows the range of skills that we have um, with people that have signed up to date. 
Right, as uh, you can see, most people who sign up to become mentees have goals and they need someone to help them uh, put those goals into plan of actions. And that is really what mentors are there for. Um, I asked for people to give me feedback over the last few months and one of the things I noticed is that a lot of mentors don't actually realize how and what they do uh, for their mentees and they, they sometimes um, don't give themselves as much credit as they should and they say to me, oh well I just spoke to my mentee a few times over the phone and I was really just a sounding board for them to come to me and I, 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 it was just, you know, the, oh that's all I could do and then I get the feedback from their mentees saying, it was great talking to them, um, they inspired confidence in me because I knew that whenever I needed help, I could just go to this person and ask them questions. So um, it's really important to emphasize that you're not their coaches, you're not there to teach them how to skydive, but really to be there, inspire them, motivate them and help them to set goals and um, turn those goals into achievements. Plans for the future. Well, one of the things that I showed you at the beginning was the graph where there was an imbalance between the number of <coughs> mentors and mentees at certain drop zones. And one of the ways in which we can deal with that is to just keep raising awareness. The best way to do it is, I would suggest, is to send out leaflets with every license that's issued by the BPA. Um, so that anyone who obtains their A license or B license and even C and D because they would be encouraged to sign up as mentors would be aware of Rise Up and therefore we can spread the word. Um, we can also um, reinforce the idea of giving back to the community and um, ask um, at the training sessions for coaches and instructors for those people to sign up to rise up and take their first step as a coach or instructor by becoming a mentor first. Um, we also want to make rise up a bit more fun so first year was more of a test run we tried to take things slowly uh, to see what what's going on in order to make sure that if there are any problems we can handle those and, and learn from those for the future. So. Going forward, uh, we're going to uh, organize social events and have competitions between mentors and mentees. However, because of the geographic area that Rise Up covers, it's impossible for the organizers um, to come from Rise Up only. So that's why we need help from mentor and mentees to host events at a drop zone. And those social events are not just for people who are already members of Rise Up. It is also for anybody else from that club or that drop zone to see what it's like, who's this community, and, and get a feel for it and perhaps join in as well. Um, we also want to award mentors and mentees who've achieved either individually or as a team together. Um, and I think that would be really important to reinforce that um, sort of award culture in Rise Up as well. And finally, we will continue to ask for feedback and um, take those on board. And I will address some of those when it comes to uh, the mentoring <coughs> pack, sorry. But um, giving feedback is important in two ways. I can find out what's going on and whether the, the program has been doing well and what's, what's wrong with it. But it's also important for you because I will swap the feedback from mentor and mentees um, if permission is granted. And then you can also see what you have achieved as a mentor, as a mentee. Um, the problem is that when I ask for feedback, sometimes people come to me and say, oh, I, I haven't heard from my mentor at all. And um, I just didn't think anything of it. Well, that's not the point. That's that that that's not a feedback. That's not a point where I should be first, f you know, finding out that you haven't actually met met with your mentor or mentee. You should be telling me that well in advance. When when I sign up people together, it is the mentor's responsibility to contact the mentee. We'll go through that in a moment, but I will inform both of them that they are now matched and paired. So if you don't hear from your mentor or mentee, just contact me. Let me know straight away. Don't wait for the end of the six months for me to come back and ask for feedback and then tell me 
uh, you haven't been in touch. Right, so um, for those of you who have already signed up as a mentor, you would be aware that when I inform you that you're now at, uh, first thing I do is contact you to say, this is the name of the person that I'm proposing to be your mentee. Um, these are their requirements. I think you would be a good match. Could you please confirm that you have the skills to help them? Um, the reason I do that is because I might not know necessarily everything about you. I only know the information that's on, on the form that you filled out. You need to be um, looking at the application that I send you to decide whether you've got the time and the skills to help the person. When you return back and say, yes, I will send you the mentor, um, mentoring guidelines and training pack for you to have a read. And I also send you the, co the contact information for your mentee, which is email address and telephone number as well. So when you contact them, please make sure you contact them via both of those mediums. Sometimes emails get lost, so it's good to just give them a ring if they haven't responded. Um, one of the feedbacks I've received, which was both positive and negative in both ways, was from two mentors. The first one said to me, um, there was a lot of pa paperwork and it, it was too much to read, too much paperwork to fill out, don't have time for that, and um, I'm, I'm happy to help mentees and be a sounding board and be over the phone for them to contact me, uh, but it's frankly too much paperwork, I'm, I can't do this. And the second person said to me, I first thought it was too much paperwork, but actually when I used it, my mentee said to me, he found it really helpful to use the structure that was provided. I've said to those people this, there are people on the drop zones everywhere that you know, they're there all day and people know them because of their sk special skills and people always go to them and ask them for advice. That's not what mentoring is about. Um, and I'm not stopping those people to help others in, in the way that they do. However, mentoring is about having a person that you go to to help you to set goals, review those goals, and those goals have to be manageable and achievable they identify your needs, your goals, and they help you to analyze your uh, achievements and set action plans and review those again and push you along the path. It is not uh, just going there for, for advice because, as I said, that's different. That's coaching and instructing, perhaps. And the other thing is um, the mentoring relationship itself can be flexible. It doesn't have to be rigid, and that's what... That's what it, that's the impression people get from the word structured. They think it's they they limited into a box and they have to act within a certain manner or ways. Um, it's not. And the mentoring guidelines and training pack includes a set of rules which is absolutely necessary to make sure that the relationship is sustainable and um, you know we don't end up getting sued for something that somebody does. And. It also sets out what happens, what's the process that you need to follow, which I will come to in a moment. The rest of it is um, basically some forms in the, in the form of a guide uh, um, logbook. You can use that if you want to. We advise you to use it. We, we think it helps you and your mentee um, to see what goals you've set down, how you're going to achieve them, which one you're going to work on first, what's the time period, and reviewing those goals and seeing um, ha what have you done, what needs to be done further and going forward. And you can use it, or you don't have to use it, you can just record your, uh, your discussions, your mentoring um, sessions in, in a, any different way. You could just keep a notebook, for example. So actually, it's not too much paperwork, I would say. And um, the information that we've provided in there is supposed to help you to, to know how to achieve the best outcome for yourself as a mentor and for your mentee. So it's a guideline. You don't have to stick to it. The other thing is, um, it's, a, it's an interesting story that I read. There was, um, there was an experiment uh, that a group of psychologists carried out, and, and this is from a book which I'll give you the name in a moment, 
Um, and they, they, they were testing to see how persuasive people can be uh, and how you can persuade yourself to, to, to commit to a certain goal or, ac or action. And what they found out was this. They, they asked everybody to think about their New Year's resolutions, as we all do. Um, and then they asked a certain group to write those resolutions down on a piece of paper. And a third group wrote those resolutions down on a piece of paper and actually shared it with somebody else, so it became public. And they found out that the third group were more likely to commit to those New Year's resolutions than the first or the second group. And the reason is this. They actively participated in setting goals, and once it was on paper, they, were, they had already taken the first step in, in doing something about what they wanted to achieve. It was an easy, simple step to write it down, but it, it reinforced them to continue with it. And once it became public, once they showed it to somebody else, they had taken the second step. And obviously, some of them didn't want to lose face, so they, they just stuck with it. So that's the idea of making sure that what you plan to do is written down and shared with somebody. That's the best way you can um, commit to something. <laughs> right, so that's the overview. Uh, as I said, it's a two-way process. You're um, helping mentees to discover their desired skills and objectives and ambitions and how, to best, how best to achieve those. You're also planning for future and analyzing different options. So it's not just the advice there and then, which canopy should I buy? Um, you're also helping them to come up with develop, development plans and you're challenging them with um, uh, their assumptions and you're trying to help them to become independent. So you, you, you're not just there to always hold their hands, but you, you're <coughs> making them make their own decisions. And you've focused on short and long-term goals and those obviously have to be realistic. A lot of mentees that sign up um, say that they have just got their A license or B license and they've got too much choices and they don't know which one to choose. One of the other best persuasive skills is to limit the choice and then the, that person is more likely to pick something that you, you put in front of them. So that's one of the roles of the um, mentee, mentors as well. Okay, as I said, you're not coaching, you're not instructing, you're developing your mentees and you're a role model for them. And uh, you inspire you inspire them and you build their confidence. Bear in mind, people learn in different ways. Some people are very good at um, going, you know, they do really well when they go to school because they, they need someone like a strict teacher to tell them these are the homeworks, this is what you have to come back with. But others actually do well on their own and do independent study. So everyone's got a different uh, method to learn and, and be inspired. Um, I'll just tell you a short, brief story again. My partner who's here, um, he was at a Mountaineers Club meeting and this guy was telling him about uh, how he cycled in the French Alps and he was going through all the details and all the achievements and everything else. By sharing his experience and relaying that story, he inspired something in my partner, Stefan. But it wasn't just about his experience. He followed that on by relaying um, to Stefan what he could do and, and gave him a plan and suggested a simpler, easier plan, which was to um, cycle from his house to the French Alps in Italy. It is far. <laughs> his house is Nuremberg. Um, and that way, he was imp inspired to do something. He was told how he could take the smaller first step and they went through the planning and he encouraged him and he did it. So find different ways to persuade and inspire your mentee and share your experiences, but don't just talk about yourself. Relate that to your mentee and tell them what they can achieve and how they can achieve it and, and encourage them to think about it as well. The other thing I should say about confidence is um, by being there, by simply knowing that that person has a mentor that they can go to when they have a problem and they want to discuss something. You already inspire confidence in those people. Um, 
the other thing is not to think too much um, in a limited way about what can I do in skydiving to inspire someone, but think out of the box. Another story is um, my sister was trying to get her driving license and she just kept saying she can't do it, she can't do it, she's not good at it. And no matter how much I told her that she was good and I took her out driving with me and I said, look, you're doing really well. And I sat with her doing her theory test and everything else. She still did not have the confidence to go and sign up and take her driving test. Um, so I did something else. I got her a um, tandem ticket and I said to her, okay, you, you're going to do this. And my parents and her, she, she, they thought they would never, ne she can't drive. She, she doesn't have confidence to drive, let alone jump out of her plane. But actually she went for that. She didn't think too much about it. She went for it and once she did it, she believed in herself and she said, well, if I can jump out of the plane, I can take my driving test. And that way she went and fa passed it first time. So d try to find different ways to inspire your mentees and don't think um, too much in, into skydiving only. Right. Now, the, in the training pack, I've um, set out that there are four stages to the, the whole mentoring process. So as I said, mentoring is not an event, it's a two-way process. Now, these four stages are actually objectives of each mentoring phase. And then there are seven steps that you follow, which spreads across these four stages. And that's how this program works. And I know it sounds a little bit confusing, but I'll go through them very quickly. So the four stages um, sets out actually what happens and what you should be doing at each phase. The first one is um, acceptance and contact initiation. As I said, I will send you the details and you as a mentor are responsible to go and contact your mentee. When you first contact your mentee, which could, which could be over the phone or uh, in an email, try not to get too, too much into detail about um, what you're trying to achieve, what are the goals, etc. That's for the next phase. <coughs> Sorry. But just try to find out what's the best way of communicating. Do they prefer to have um, some time to, to discuss this at a drop zone or whether they want to be on Skype or on the phone? Um, and then go and then set the first date for your meeting, wherever that might be. Um, the discovery meeting is when you actually sit down and you go through what happens. The first thing is you need to um, set some ground rules and I don't mean it in, in a legal way, let's say, but just to, to set some boundaries to know what they should be expecting and what you can provide for them. So for, for example, one of the rules you might set is they can contact you anytime by email, uh, you might not necessarily be able to answer them straight away. That's not a problem. If I don't answer back within three days, please remind me, that sort of thing. So they, they don't think that they are bugging you or you, you don't necessarily feel under pressure to constantly answer everything. And by the way, um, all we ask mentors to spend, the minimum is one hour per month. So it, it shouldn't take too much time um, from your <laughs> daily lives. Um, so, as I said, it, it, it would be good to start by sharing some of your experiences and finding out um, generally how you can offer them um, help and what skills you can share. And then invite them to tell you their story because some of those are quite interesting, trust me, when I get the applications. Um, the main part, the main point from the discovery meeting is to find out what their needs are, what are um, their goals and what they want to achieve, and then use those goals in order to uh, use those needs and, and what they want to achieve to set realistic goals. They might have four or five, but try and focus on one goal or two goals at a time because um, that would be better for them to commit. And then from those goals, you can set action plans and write all of those down. There are certain um, forms in the logbook that you can easily fill out um, to, to keep a record of all of this. 
And then at the end of the meeting, you should recap, always summarize what you've discussed, what you're trying to achieve, and set the next date for your next meeting. Now, your next meeting is going to be prog progress meeting, and this is not just one progress meeting. You could have several different progress meetings because every time you go back, um, you ask your um, mentee to give you an update on uh, what they have achieved. You go back and review those needs, goals, action plans, what's been done, what hasn't been done. And one of the main points about progress meeting is your um, questioning technique, and which should uh, push and uh, encourage the mentee to analyze their own performance. So you're not there to just constantly tell them what to do, but push them to, to come up with what why they haven't achieved what they said to achieve, how they're going to achieve that. So that's part of making them also becoming more independent. And one of the things you should always do as well is encourage them. Um, once we become adults, we don't have our parents to pat us on the back and say, well done, you've done a great job, but we, we do all need that sort of encouragement. So you being there to acknowledge that would help them a lot to keep continuing and do a good work. And it's just a really simple thing, but people forget about things like that. So you might have, as, as I say, you might have several progress meetings. And once you get to a stage where you think, OK, this is coming to an end, you would have your final meeting. And as part of the final meeting, again, you, you get an update. Um, you encourage your mentee to analyze their overall performance, to, to, to reflect back on what they have achieved. Um, you go over what needs they had, what goals they had, what action plans you set. Um, and you encourage them to celebrate the achievements. And then finally, you give them feedback and um, on their achievements and on the mentoring relationship. And I'll also ask them to, to give you feedback on how well you've done as a mentor because um, that would be a good encouragement for you to continue as well. Um, there is an evaluation form um, at the end of the <laughs> logbook that um, is part of the training pack. So it would be really helpful if you just get your mentee to, to, to fill that in. It doesn't take long. Um, and then um, also encourage them to encourage other people to, to join the mentoring program so that more people can benefit from it. That's, that's literally the um, fourth stage, the whole process of how mentoring uh, works. Now, the seven steps are more detailed. This is more about, uh, for example, the first three, you normally um, do those as part of your phase one, uh, of phase one and two. You ask them to identify their needs and how to set goals and establish an agreement. Um, I've provided detailed notes on how to do those in the training manual. So I would invite you to read them. And if you have any questions, either email me or just come and see me afterwards and we'll go through them. Um, the main point I want you to take from this session is that your role is to inspire motivate, encourage, and uh, persuade, really. Persuade them to stick to goals and, and take um, active part in, in the mentoring session. Um, there are also some do's and don'ts in uh, the training manual. Again, those are just guidelines. Uh, you will find a lot of information on the internet about how to improve your skills and um, I will send those informations out as well. So there we one of the things we did was, um, sorry, this is the cycle of the mentoring program. I'm conscious of the time as well. Um, one of the things we did as part of the uh, development of the um, scheme since I had the last seminar was to set up a Facebook page. I try not to be too annoying and send constant updates. So if I am quiet, it's because I'm trying not to annoy anyone. Um, but I will do, uh, I will send some updates and information on points that you can pick up uh, as, as a mentor. And I will also <laughs> hopefully um, get 
people signing up to host events and social um, comp sociable competitions at the drop zone. So I will post those information there as well. If you're not a member of this Facebook group, you can um, type in that name. I, I was going to copy and paste the link, but it was too big. So I don't know how to shorten it. <laughs> So if you find uh, if you find Rise Up page on Facebook and you send a request and I will approve it so you become a member. And also the link at the bottom is the link to the sign up. Uh, we haven't moved to the BPA's new website yet, but hopefully that would happen in due course. We don't know yet. And when that happens, then obviously it would be much easier for you to, to have your own profile and to keep it updated. Um, and uh, if there are any questions, you can share as part of that sort of community on the on the website. The other thing I want to say is that when you sign up with Rise Up, you obviously send me your um, form, which is a snapshot of where you are at and what you're doing. <coughs> if your circumstances change, please let me know. It's really important that. I keep everything up to date. I've had people um, signing up and being me me saying that they are jumping at a particular drop zone, but actually then they've moved even out of the UK and they've not bothered to tell me. So please do tell me because uh, it would be really useful to know. And also, if you start your relationship with your mentee and they achieve their goals before the six month period, which is the minimum per period to, to, um, to stay together, please do let me know because that mentor could then be available to take somebody else. And as you saw from the first graph, I struggle with certain drop zones. So please let me know. Right. I think there is time for questions. Anyone? Absolutely, yeah. Um, that was that was part of our plan to um, allow tandem jumpers to experience what it's like to be a skydiver. And I thought it would be a really good idea to pair them up with someone and they can spend a day at the drop zone and just see what it's like and s perhaps even reduce some of the fears that they have about skydiving. Uh, but we haven't, we haven't sent out leaflets. I have asked the drop zone owners to assist us by spreading the word uh, but obviously we need to do more work on that and also um, I think once we go on our website and on our new BPA website people that want that come to the BPA website and wanting to do tantum might might be um, uh, might become aware of rise up and actually think um, I could do that or that and just sign up <coughs> they do yeah Yeah, that would be the that would be part of uh, our plan to to basically leaflet out <laughs> with the with the um, licenses. But also, there are some other developments. I think tandems will be going. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Martin. Tandems will not be going through drop zones anymore. The the insurance or something. I can't remember. We discussed this. So that once that goes through the BPA, then we can do that as well. But yeah, it, it would certainly be down to people at every drop zone to let tandem jumpers know that <coughs> if they fancy skydiving, they can, they can um, shadow someone and see what it's like. Well, not shadow them in the sky, but... <laughs> Any other questions? No? Well, thank you very much for coming. Um, if you have any questions later on, come and find me or send me an email. Um, thank you very much.